What's up YouTube? Welcome to Code Affection. This is a Flutter tutorial for complete beginners or newbies. In this video, we will get started with creating our first Flutter app and we will discuss how things work inside Flutter app. Without further ado, let's get started with the topic. First of all, let's discuss Flutter environment setup in brief. For that, you could see this Flutter documentation for each operating system. In case of any operating system, whether it is Windows, Mac OS or Linux, in common you have to install the Flutter SDK and you have to configure the path. And then after that you have to install this Android Studio. We can use Android Studio as an IDE, apart from that it contains the Android emulator. In my case, I will be using VS Code Editor as an IDE, you can use whatever you wish. Even though you have to install Android Studio for the emulator. In the end of this tutorial, we have discussed some tweaks or tricks to speed up your Flutter app development in Windows operating system. On the other hand, if you are using Mac OS or Linux OS, it won't cause that much problem because both Android and the operating system works on Linux operating system. This documentation here will be really helpful to set up the environment. I have given the link in video description. So with that being said, Let's get started with creating our first Flutter app. I want to create the Flutter app inside this project directory here. So first of all, we have to open command prompt from the same folder directory. For that, you can use this shortcut in Windows. Inside this folder path here, just type cmd then hit enter. Once you install the Flutter SDK and configure the path as mentioned inside the documentation, we can make use of Flutter command to start with the development. To create a Flutter app, you can do this Flutter create the name of the app. I will name this app as counter, hit enter. It will take a while to complete this process, so please be patient. Once you are completed with the command execution, you could see this new folder here with the app name counter. In order to run your application, we have to execute these commands one by one. First of all, we have to navigate inside this folder counter. So cd counter this flutter run command is to run the application inside the emulator we can do that later first of all let me open this application inside vs code editor for that you can do this code space period or dot simple so here we have the brand new flutter app now in order to run this flutter app first of all we have to run our emulator it is a virtual device for Android or iOS. For this tutorial, we will be using Android emulator. You can create one by following this documentation here. I have given the link in video description. You can go through the steps here to create an Android emulator. It is straightforward. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on creating our first Flutter app here. Now let's start the emulator from this Visual Studio. Once you completely loaded this project, in the bottom side, you can see this no device. Click on it and then you can see the list of emulator that we have created inside the Android Studio. I'm going to open this uh, emulator here. Click on it. It will take some time to display the emulator. So please be patient. So here we have the Android emulator. Now let me arrange this IDE and the emulator side by side here. Now let's run this application for that you can also use the terminal by just executing the flutter command. So here's the corresponding command flutter run. So this command will run our application inside the emulator that we have selected at the bottom which is here. Okay. Apart from this run command here you can also use the shortcut just press F5 here and then select dart and flutter. So if you are using Visual Studio Code Editor, you have to install these extensions, both Flutter and Dart inside the IDE, like I have done here. I have installed both Flutter and Dart here. So make sure that you have installed those two extensions, then only this shortcut works. So as you can see here, the process is working in background. If you are running Flutter app for the first time on your system, you may have to install this software Gradle on your system. So for the first time, it will take some time, so please be patient. If you are getting started with mobile app development for the first time, it's not that easy like we have done web development. As you move forward, you will get used to it. 
So here we have the brand new Flutter app. The main aim of this application is to count number of times this uh, floating button is pressed. As you press on this floating button here, you can see that this count get incremented. Inside this folder explorer here, you can see this folder lib for library. Inside that you can see this file main.dart. As you might already know, the Flutter app development uses this programming language called Dart. That's why this file has this extension Dart here. Inside this file, here you can see this main file. This is the starting point of the execution. As you can see, this main function is an arrow function. Inside that, we have called this function run app into the function we just need to pass a widget so that this widget will be displayed inside this mobile app screen here. So here is the widget my app, which is a class in Dart programming language. And hence, you can say that Dart is an object oriented programming language. So this is the root widget of our app, my app. As you can see, this my app class is inherited from this parent class here, stateless widget. In case of Flutter app, there are two types of widgets. They are stateless widget and stateful widget. In case of stateless widget, we can't change its appearance because of the user triggered events, for example, on press. For example, you can say button is a stateless widget. In case of stateful widget, its appearance can be changed through user triggered events. For example, you can say checkbox. When you check on that checkbox, it will get a tick mark to indicate it's already marked. Means appearance of stateful widget depends on its state object or variable. So that's how we can simply differentiate stateful widget and stateless widget in Flutter. So inside this run app function here, we have created an instance of this my app widget and inside that you can see the function built and it is overridden the parent class function built. Inside that we can design the widget. In case of a Flutter application, the main building block of a Flutter app is widget. That's why you can see the widget everywhere in a Flutter application. In, so inside this build method here, we have called this function material app. So basically by default, Flutter app uses material design from Google for its widget design. You can see the same here, material design. It is a design system designed by Google itself. You might have already seen components from this material design in various website or application. For example, you could see Gmail is designed with material design and most of the mobile applications are using this material design. In order to use this material app, we have to import this package at the top. Inside this function, you could see these parameters for this material app, title, theme, and home. So here we have the title for the application as Flutter Demo. And here is the theme of this uh, application. Inside that we can configure general view of the application. For example, the primary color of this application is set as blue here. That's why you could see this uh, app bar and this floating button in blue color. If you change that to something green, now you can see the change here. Now let me change that back to blue. It looks better than green. And with this home parameter, we can pass a widget for designing the home screen of the app. The home screen of the app is designed inside this widget here, my home page. You can say it is a stateful widget because it inherits from this base class here, stateful widget. In case of stateless widget, it will import from this parent class, stateless widget. If you are new to Dart, it might be confusing for you. Here we have the class my home page and here is the corresponding class constructor my home page. It has two parameters key and title. And with this super function here, we are calling the parent widget constructor. Into that constructor, we have passed the value of key. We have called this constructor here. In order to create an instance, you don't have to use this keyword new here. It's also valid as per new syntax, you don't have to mention the new keyword here. When you are calling a constructor, it will automatically create the instance of the class as expected. So while calling this constructor, we only pass value for this parameter title. These parameters key and title 
are optional since they are enclosed inside a pair of curly brace like this. To pass value for this named parameter, we have to mention the name while passing value for the parameter while calling the function. So this key parameter is just to pass the value to the parent widget here. The value for this title here is saved inside this string here. By adding this final keyword here, we can only initialize this title one time only. So in this case, we are initializing this title during the constructor invocation. Inside stateful widget, we have to override this function from parent class create state. As you can see, it is a separate class here underscore my home page state. So by convention, you can see that it starts with underscore and it should end with this state here. It will inherit from this parent class state of the type my home page. So here we are trying to separate the code of the state and the widget separately. Inside this widget, we have only one state variable underscore counter. We can talk about this function increment counter later. And here is the build function. You can see the same function inside stateless widget also. So first of all, inside the function, we have called this scaffold method here. Inside that, we have assigned some commonly used parameters, app bar, body, floating action button, etc. As we have mentioned already, this app bar, this text, center and this column all of them are widget implemented inside flutter package in brief the title that you can see inside this app bar is assigned from the parameter to access the title parameter inside this text widget here we can do this widget dot title and then here we have the floating button when you click on that this counter is incremented to do that here we have wired up this on press event to this function underscore increment counter inside this function we have incremented this invariable counter we have to change the state variable or object inside this function set state and that's how it refresh its appearance here i'm going to make few more changes inside this application so that we can have a counter application as you might have seen in play store it will be a simple application with two buttons plus and minus with that, we can increment or decrement the counter. So let's look how we can modify this application to create a simple Flutter app. So first of all, let's look how to modify this design here as per our requirement. Inside this stateful widget, as you can see, we have created an instance of this class scaffold, which implements the basic material UI design structure. And rest of these widgets are passed parameter for this class constructor here, app bar, body etc first of all we have this app bar which comes from this widget here app bar the text inside this app bar is passed into this stateful widget as a parameter title here instead of flutter demo home page here we will change that into counter with the help of hot reload in flutter app development you can see the same at the same time inside this app here now, if you want to send us this text inside this app bar, we just need to enclose this text inside another widget called sender. In order to show this text widget as a sub widget for the sender widget, you can use the shortcut. Just select this text widget. In VS Code Editor, you can use the shortcut hold control, then press period or dot simple and select this option wrap with widget, replace this widget with sender in order to apply proper indentation inside this dart file you can use the vs code shortcut shift alt f now the app bar text is shown inside the sender because of this sender widget here so that's all about the modification inside this app bar here now here we have the body so here also we have shown every sub widget inside this sender widget. So every widget will be in center horizontally. Inside that we have this widget column. All of its sub widgets will be displayed vertically. You could see the same inside the documentation here. So here we have the column widget and you could see the sub widget shown inside the circle here. So just opposite for this column, you could see another widget row here. Sub widgets are aligned horizontally so back to the application here 
currently we have two sub widgets of the type text you could see the same here first one is this one and below that we have this counter it will get updated when we click on this floating button here inside this application we don't need this floating action button here we will do that with normal buttons so i will just remove this floating button here below this counter text here we have to show two buttons for increment and decrement operation in flutter there are various types of buttons button bar drop down button flat button icon button etc inside this application we have to use this button raise button so let's add two buttons for increment and decrement operation raise button initially we don't have any function for on press click event i will set it as null here like this we need one more raise button so let me duplicate that inside this first button here we have to show the um plus buttons so we can add that inside this child here text widget can be used and here we have the text and inside this second raise button here we can show the minus text so let's add that here now we have to stretch these widgets so that we can occupy the free space inside this screen here for that we can enclose these widgets with expanded widget so select the widget then use the shortcut control period then select this option wrap with widget widget will be expanded as you can see the space above these buttons are occupied by this text counter here now let's do the same for raise buttons also so currently we have applied expanded widget to all of the sub widgets so all of them take vertically one by third of the screen now we have to expand these widgets horizontally for that we just need to change the axis alignment cross axis alignment inside column widget main axis will be the horizontal axis from top to bottom like this and that of cross axis alignment will be left to right like this so let's change the cross axis alignment is equal to cross axis alignment dot stretch so that's it we occupy the free space across cross axis also we don't need this center alignment for main axis so let me remove that from here in order to center this first counter text here we can wrap this text here inside the center widget so let me select this text widget here then use the shortcut control period actually we have to wrap this with a widget that option is not listed here and since we have already a parent widget expanded here so we can do this first of all we will select this wrap with column here change column into sender remove this collection wrapping here so we have aligned this counter text in center now i want to apply some margin for this plus button and minus button here for that first of all we have to enclose this raise button inside container widget so select the widget here then use the same shortcut hold control then press period or dot symbol actually we have to enclose that with a widget that option is not listed because we already have a parent widget expanded for now you can select this wrap with column here change column into container we don't need this pair of square brackets so let me remove that now inside this container we can apply the margin margin is equal to edge insets dot symmetric function can be called so here we are trying to apply same margin vertically and horizontally if you use this function or same margin will be applied from all of the parts in same way we have another functions for different approaches to apply the margin for now i will select this symmetric function here vertically we need margin of the range 5 then horizontally we need 20 so we have applied the same margin here now let me change this raise button background color that we can do here color is equal to colors dot white at the top we have the pure white below that you could see the variations with difference in opacity i will select this white 
70. We can't see the modification inside this button. It is because of this on press event here instead of now. We have to pass an anonymous function like this. Now you could see the modification here. We have changed the background color of the race button. Instead of modifying this existing race button here, I will just copy this expanded widget here. We just need to change the button text. Copy paste that here instead of this plus button. We just need to replace that with minus. Since we have expanded these three sub widgets vertically, we have to allocate more space for this counter here. For that, we can use this flex property here. Flex is equal to four. Now let's apply flex for remaining widgets also. Flex of the range two and that of minus will be one flex one now i want to change font size for these widgets here so first of all we have the text counter here instead of this default style here we can do this text style font size is equal to 150 now let me copy this and pasting here for raise buttons also font size will be 100 and that of last minus button here will be 50. Now when we click on this plus and minus button, we have to increment and decrement this counter respectively. From the previous floating button, we have this function here, increment counter. We are changing this function for both increment and decrement operations. So function name will be update counter. For this function, we have single parameter is increment. So we will increment this counter if this boolean value is true. So we can check that with if statement here, if is increment is true, we will update the counter else we will decrement the counter. So we can do this counter dot minus minus. So these two operators are unary operators in Dart. Now let's call this function inside this raise button here. So first of all, we have the plus button here. We can do this update counter we have to increment the counter so i will pass true here now let me copy this and pasting here for decrement operation we have to pass false here back to the application boo that's it it is working as expected so that's all about modifying the default flutter app as per our requirement now let's look how we can speed up your system especially if you are using windows os so here is the first step while creating an Android emulator, we have to allocate minimum RAM. While creating this emulator, you will be asked for the uh, RAM assigned for this emulator. You could see the same here also inside this RAM section here. To minimize the RAM utilization, I have set that to 512 MB. So first up, while creating the emulator, minimize the RAM utilization here. As a second step, you could use the virtual machine acceleration. I have given the link for configuring hardware acceleration for emulator. If you are using an Intel processor, make sure that you have installed this Intel HAX. You could see the same inside this Android Studio here. For that, first of all, open SDK Manager from Android Studio here. So you can click on this top right button here. Inside this SDK tools, make sure that you have installed this Intel Emulator Accelerator. Inside your system boot menu, we have to enable virtualization technology as you can see here. Depending upon your system boot menu, this option will be available in different places. So that's all about hardware acceleration for the emulator. Now here we have the step 3. During build process inside this build folder, we will have new folders and files are created. If you are running any antivirus or firewall on your system, try to disable that, then check whether it helps for the development. So these are the steps to speed up your Flutter app development if you are struggling with your RAM space. I have also given an extra article link in video description. It may help you to speed up your Flutter app development. So that's all about this video tutorial. I hope this will be really helpful for those who are getting started with Flutter app development. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video and for more awesome videos like this, please be subscribed to this channel Code of Friction. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this. 
have a nice day bye